live again. You just watched a quick little time lapse of those newsletters printing. I got two signatures over there. It's just an eight pager. But I got a rush order for a bunch of material for a trade show. So, and that's not done yet. But the nice thing about this good old fiery here is that I can squeeze in the next job without stopping that one. So gonna print a couple of those things. Really just checking registration, make sure it's backed up right. It's right on, so I'll let them run. are done. You can see here. Starting to see yellow on the edge. That means the drum is uh, it's on its way out. So that other week, uh, I believe it was just the magenta drum that was replaced. It's not going to be long before uh, this one's going to go. Real simple one today, just an eight pager. Nice thing about this machine is I can use it to count. So if you go in here, oh sorry, this one right here, I can put in 36, enter, and as soon as I hit start, then it'll do 36 and stop. So I use that for this job because this newsletter, like 50 gets shipped to one address, 300 to another, 65 to another. So it's a bunch of different quantities. And instead of hand counting, I just use the machine to count it. Makes it a lot quicker. Okay, setup's automated on this machine. It's pretty awesome. So I have this saved, recall, this uh, 18, by 11, every once in a while, you gotta click it a couple times. Uh, then we do memory recall, okay. I need to put the center guides in. straight 
taking these guys out, which I should theoretically take out. Snap these guys in. And theoretically, first booklet out of here should be perfect. Now we got first tower is on, and then this will automatically recognize the bins we have paper in, and uh, and uh, draw one of each in. Staple, fold, that don't look too bad. Okay, so I need 107 for the first one. Yeah, that went really well, but that just means that we need to get more production out of this. So clear that out. Let's do 200. We're going to speed it up a good bit. better. I might even speed it up more. Rinse and repeat till I'm done. See, I think I have, it might be like 60 or so addresses. How I manage this list is I have an Excel file with all the addresses on it, and then one of the columns has the total number of pieces that get mailed to that address. And then in InDesign, I use Data Merge to create address labels that have the mail quantity on each label. So then I just print the labels out and bring them here to the collator with me. Then I can punch in however many I want to get counted by the machine and then mailed out. That's how I do that. I think that's the most efficient way I can do it with the equipment software that I have. So depending on how many is going to a certain spot, like here, 137, we put it in a box. But here I'm only doing 55, so that I put in a plastic sleeve, and those are done. I don't know if you can see the die marks on here, uh, but this is an eight up label. It's got two, four, six, eight labels. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind, whenever you're printing on label stock that's die cut, uh, generally 
there is a lead edge that's marked. Uh, so I don't know if you can see there or not, but there are two cut marks in the sheet. And that means that's the registration corner. So each page is registered to that corner. So when you're loaded into your press, you're gonna want this edge to be moving forward because your, your printing on each sheet is gonna start from the start of the sheet. So that means if there's a variance of a half a millimeter or a millimeter with the expanding and contracting of your paper that the tail end, you know, wherever it falls, who cares? But from the front edge where your registration mark is, it'll be true. And uh, got to keep that in mind too because as you're loading more stock into the press, you want to make sure that that mark is always towards the front at the same spot because if you rotate one on top of another, your labels aren't going to be uh, aligned very nicely. It's going to move on you. So check for registration mark on there. Okay, now that I have that loaded, I'm going to go here, tray five, and I have 1117 label stock. Then I'm going to open up the job. And then 1117 label stock. Um, let's change it to face up. If I had multiple pages, I'd change it to group, but I only have one. So we'll just print it just like that. And if I'm lucky, it'll be sellable and I'll print the rest of them. That's pretty good. Let's run them. Okay, just got finished printing these. These are note cards. 12 point C1S, so you can write on the inside. The inside's not coated, it's uncoated. Coated on the outside. So I printed these two up. They need to be scored and folded. Okay, I've gotten all these scored now. So now I just cut them down, fold them, and then they're done. I don't know if you can see that. but like every one of those crop marks is right on the edge and split in half. That means that press really holds tight as it's printing. I'm pretty impressed with them. Okay, I think we'll call it a day. Not a whole lot of stuff going on today. Had those uh, 2000 newsletters and a bunch of flyers, some brochures, uh, these note cards here. Um, that was fun. It was a, it was a good day. Uh, I will be busier later in the week. I'll try and catch that on film for you guys. Some. Uh, larger magazine printing jobs. And uh, also we'll be working on a shop tour. So I want to uh, kind of tell each machine's story and I want to talk about maintenance on them all and uh, uh, where they came from and you know what I have to say about them. So that's, it's gonna be a long one uh, when I put that one together, but it should be fun and I hope you like it. So anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.